Hey, this is Dr. K from My Medical School here to answer our most recent USMLE practice question. Make sure to check out our website at imedicalschool.org and the rest of our videos on our YouTube channel, iMedical School. Well, let's get to the question. A 42-year-old female presents to an urgent care center with respiratory distress and confusion. An ABG is drawn and shows a pH of 7.1, PCO2 of 80, and a bicarb of 25. What is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, diabetic ketoacidosis, B, panic attack, C, heroin overdose, D, diuretic overuse, or E, chronic bronchitis? All right, now that you've had some time to ponder your answer, let's go over the question. By the question alone, we can tell we need to interpret this ABG to figure out the answer. The first step in interpretation is to figure out if the patient is acidotic or alkalotic, as each answer has a completely different differential. Normal pH varies from about 7.35 to 7.45. If a pH is greater than this range, the patient is alkalotic, and if a patient falls below this range, they are acidotic. In the case of this lady, she has a pH of 7.1, meaning she is acidotic. Now that we know she is acidotic, we need to figure out if this is a respiratory acidosis or a metabolic acidosis. Essentially, is this process being driven by the lungs or is a process within the body? To figure this out, we look at the PCO2 and the bicarbonate level. If the PCO2 is elevated in an acidosis, then this means this is a respiratory acidosis, as the hypoventilation is causing carbon dioxide to build up in the blood, turning it acidotic. On the other hand, if the PCO2 is low in the setting of an acidosis, then look at the bicarbonate level. If it is low as well, this indicates that the acidosis is caused by a metabolic disorder, and the lungs have compensated by hyperventilating and blowing off CO2. In this case, our patient has a high PCO2 of 80 in the setting of a pH of 7.1 and a normal bicarbonate, indicating she has a respiratory acidosis. Using this information alone, we can eliminate some answers. First off, we have a primary respiratory acidosis, so we can eliminate any metabolic disorders. Diabetic ketoacidosis causes a metabolic acidosis, so we can eliminate it as a cause. Next, diuretic overuse causes a contraction alkalosis or a metabolic alkalosis. As a result, we can eliminate it as well. Finally, panic attacks lead to hyperventilation with short, shallow breaths that leads to a rapid CO2 expulsion. Panic attacks cause a respiratory alkalosis. Given our patient's ABG findings, we can eliminate panic attacks as we are dealing with a respiratory acidosis. The next step is to eliminate the remaining answer choices of heroin overdose versus chronic bronchitis. Clearly, one of these processes is acute and one is chronic. So the next step is to understand if the body has compensated for the respiratory acidosis or not. Why is that important? Well, it's because if the kidneys have enough time to compensate for the respiratory acidosis, then this indicates a chronic process as it takes time for the kidneys to compensate fully. If the kidneys do not have enough time to fully compensate, then this is an acute process. There's a formula to help calculate compensation, but we will go over a simpler way to remember compensation. For an acute respiratory acidosis, for every increase in the PCO2 by 10, the bicarb will only increase by 1. On the other hand, for a chronic respiratory acidosis, for every increase by 10 of the PCO2, the bicarb will increase by 3.5 milliequivalents. In this case, the PCO2 is 80 with a bicarb of 25, indicating no significant compensation by the kidneys to counter the respiratory acidosis. As a result, this is an acute process indicating chronic bronchitis is likely the wrong answer and heroin overdose is the right answer. 
Heroin overdose also causes respiratory depression, leading to a decreased rate of breathing and acute CO2 retention, leading to acidosis. Well, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, give this video a like. Share this video with your friends, place any comments down below, and most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.